Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The second one, Bahabati fillah, in the hadith about riya, about showing off and about doing actions of worship to, and having those actions nullified for showing off is the one who the one who shared knowledge, Islamic knowledge, the alam or the reader. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَرَجُلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمُ وَعَلَّمُهُ وَقَرَأَ فِي وَقَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ فَمَا مَلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ تَعَلَّمْتَ الْعِلْمُ وَعَلَّمْتَهُ وَقَرَأَتَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ كَذَّبْتْ وَلَكِنَّكَ فَعَلْتَ لِي قَالْ هُوَ عَالِمٌ وَقَرَأَتَ قرآن ليقال هو قارئ فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجي حتى الكيف النار. The second one who for showing off and this is relevant to our study in سورة المعون the ayah we just left off on. This is the one who sought knowledge. He sought religious knowledge and. He memorized the Quran and was a beautiful reciter. And he was asked about it. And he said, I, 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 I learned knowledge and I taught it. SubhanAllah, that's the status of the scholars in the in the 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 uh du'at in the Tulab al Ilm. That's their status, that's their manzah. That's great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do it for Allah's sake. Not to show off in front of the people, not to have your name known. May Allah protect us. And the one who recited the Quran, and he, he, he did. So the point is, it was said. They got what they wanted. They got that to be famous in this life. The people were going to their website, the people were spreading their name, they were getting famous, they were so happy, they were on all the flyers, all the Dawa circuits, they were around the world, they were this big bag, that, and everywhere. Faqad Kiel, it was said about you, you were a great reciter. MashaAllah, Antibin Ahlul Jinnah, all these praises, breaking their backs, and they loved the praise. So they got their reward in this life. Then they were thrown in the fire. And the last one, Arajalun Wasa, Wasa Allah Ali, Wasa Allah Ali, Wa Atahu Min Isnafik Mal Kulli, Fuuti Abihi Farfu Ni Amu Farfa, Kala Fama Multifiha, Kala Ma Tarak to Min Sibila and Unfaka Fiha, Ila and Fakta Fiha Luck, Kala Kithat, Walakin the Kathal to Lia Kal Hua Jawad Fakat Kil, Tumba Umbe Abihi, Tumba Ulki of him. The last one was the man who spent. And he was brought before Allah and he asked, well, you know, he's going to ask, what did you do? What did you do for me? He said, I didn't leave a path except that I spend it for your sake. Meaning, he, uh, every kind of, <coughs> every kind of sadaqa you can think of, sadaqa jariya, who spend it on the students of knowledge, who spend it in, on Dawa centers who spent on the Fuqara and the Musakin, he was doing it for Dawa to call the Jews and Christians and everyone to Islam. He was spending, spending, spending in righteousness and doing good. But he did it to show off. And he got his reward in this life. He got famous. But in the hereafter, he was thrown in the hellfire. This shows us the results of showing off of Riyadh and especially in these religious matters I can't emphasize this enough and I'm going to even say this again learn this dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika in ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruka liman a'lamu Oh Allah Allahumma inni a'udhu bika in ushrika I seek refuge in you from that uh, shirk that I've done knowingly 
and unknowingly, because sometimes you're not even aware, and then sometimes you feel it kicking in, a little bit of show off. Everybody's looking at you while you're speaking. Everybody's praising you. So it can happen. The Ulama have to fight this. The Salaf had to fight this. So who are we? Of course we have to fight this. We have to fight the being, wanting to have our name out there and wanting to be praised by the people. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in these affairs. Oh Allah, forgive us and protect us from any and all forms of shirk and showing off in summa and trying to be heard. May Allah bless us to be a benefit for us when we die and not against us. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Going back to the ayat, and forgive me for going a little bit off, but I think we're still on target on the topic. These are the people who delay their salat. And they, those who do good deeds only to be seen. That was the shahid mentioned in that hadith. Showing off with their deeds to earn people's sympathy or praise. Just like the supposed mujahid, the supposed alam and body, and the supposed uh, spendthrift or philanthropist. And withhold al ma'un. They do all this and then they withhold the small things. So these are all sifat mithmumah. These are wicked sins. And Imam said he's going to, in the end, he's going to bring it all back to us. You know, synthesize it or summarize it. All these fawaid. He said they also withhold small kindnesses of minor value and do not lend them or give them as gifts, including pots, pails, axes, and so forth. Normal behavior dictates that one should not withhold such kindnesses and instead be charitable in this regard. Yet these people withhold such minor items because they are misers. So what about what is more valuable than these items? This surah encourages and emphasizes kindness towards orphans and the poor, preserving and perfecting the prayer, and being sincere in prayer and in all other actions. This surah also encourages performing righteous acts and helping others with minor kindnesses, like lending a pot, a pail, a book, and similar items. Indeed, Allah chastises those who do not practice this better behavior. And He surely has more knowledge in what is righteous, and all thanks are due to Allah, Lord of all that exists. Ahabatifillah. We got immense benefit from this great Imam al Sa'di. And the Surah, and hopefully we can practice it. And avoid those characteristics which are negative, sinful characteristics. And do those things which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we have to know, and this is an encouragement to myself. And all the Muslims, but especially Ahl-Sunnah, especially the Salafis, to make sure that you're trying to implement Islam truly, happen. It's not sufficient for us to say we're Salafi, to say we're from Ahl-Sunnah, to say we're from Ahl-Hadith, to say we're from Ahl-Athar, but we don't have correct Aqidah. And we don't have correct minhaj, methodology, and how we understand the text, and how we practice and implement, and how we give da'wah. And correct akhlaq and manners. This is a part of Islam. So don't make inkar of the one who calls people to good manners. The Prophet ﷺ perfected akhlaq. He came to perfect your manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مِيزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ الْفَاهِشَ الْبِذِينَ SubhanAllah We need to practice that. That's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those are characteristics of Ahl Sunnah. Those are characteristics of the Salafiyun. That they have these characteristics. We shouldn't be scaring away everyone from our da'wah. We should call everyone with the small kindnesses, with the good deeds. How are you going to call Ahl Bidah? You should have an intention to call Ahl Bidah from their Bidah. They're Muslim. You should have an intention to call Ahl Shirk from the Shirk. They need Islam. They need salvation. We're ordered to give da'wah. We're ordered to give goodness. We're ordered to do kindness. And. The hadith, there isn't a thing on the day of judgment more that weighs heavier scale on the believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa Ali wa Sahbi wa Sallam.